If you had the opportunity to live in a children's wonderland, would you choose anywhere else? We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Welcome to Real Talk with me, Anel M. Doda. My guest today has owned the stage, and I'm talking television as well, film screens, since her teen years. She is naturally a SAFTA winner several times over. Her trials and tribulations have taught her that gusto for life comes from within, not the buzz or the hype that seemingly the glam life of showbiz can bring you. One of her most memorable roles is her portrayal of femme fatale named Naomi, described as balls on heels in a TV soap. I have the incomparable actress and producer, Mushidi Mutecha, with me today. Please make all the noise you can. Oh God, I feel like I must clap for myself. You have to clap for yourself. you introduced me. Uh -uh. Ah, um, girl, I could do this often. Once a week. <laughs> Once a week. What do your Thursdays look like? <laughs> <laughs> like, Thursdays is you. So, on Instagram, I wrote, I'm about to have an interview with the second most famous Naomi <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Everyone's like, who that, who that, who that? And now you're here. Does that role still stalk you? She will always stalk me. Uh, I think she's bigger than me. Okay. I think she's a lot of people. I've actually had to own her and say, you are bigger than me. You were an energy that was needed at the time. Uh -huh. You must have spoken to spaces and places in women's lives, particularly black women. Yes. And black women in love. Yes, yes. And the way we love our men. Almost psychotically so. So when I meet the others, the tribe. Yes. Because the, the, the Naomi homies. fans. The, the Naomi's. Naomi's. <laughs> you know, I was once doing an interview and somebody said, Sometimes I say to my boyfriend, don't make me go Naomi on you. <laughs> and I thought, yo, this is, this is real. I know, it almost became like a, a verb, right? Yes. Going Naomi yes. was like, <laughs> yes. you like your car, ne? Exactly. You like your car. Yes. Stop this thing. Then. So I think we, 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 I think, and I think it's a collective thing when you work mm. as an actor. I don't think you're ever doing the work on your own. <gasps> That's big. And when I say collective, I mean that the energies of the world around you affects you. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're right, because your fan base, you derive the energy yes. from them as well. Yes. So when you were like putting Naomi out, yes. you were just like portraying so yes. many of us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and when they, they talk back at you, the fans, yeah. you then know that this, you've been given the space, that you've been asked to to carry on. To carry on. Yeah. Create. To, to exercise. Yeah. <laughs> to help the situation. You know, um, and when I actually got the role, I, I struggled with the role because I, I didn't really understand it. They mm -hmm. had sort of based it on a character from The Bold and the Beautiful from Sheila. Years yes, that one. Yo. Deep. Hey, girl. But my issue with it is that I was not finding her blackness. Mm. There was a lot of English and I was struggling. I was like, yo, I mm. can't feel this woman. Mm. And Jamie Bartlett, God bless Jamie Bartlett. I have such a crush on him. Carry on. Have a crush yo, on him, baby. Girl. He yo. is a hot actor. Jonga, everything there, hey? Give okay. MCM, give men crush Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Hi, girl, bring it back. Hi, 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 Lent. Di breathe from the yes, diaphragm. Yes, please, from the diaphragm. We spoke about this. <laughs> but he said to me, Moshi, she's a woman on a street where you live. Now, for me, the street where I live is the street where I grew up. I grew up in Alex. Alexander Township. Yeah. So for me, when I build a character, it is always from 6th Avenue, okay. from the yard where I grew up, number 6, number 28. And I always do this exercise, which is I imagine all the houses in that yard. I open the doors of each house. I see the women that live, in that there live with their stories. With their stories. And, I, and I take those stories. I put them in a suitcase and I take them to work with me, and then I, I create you a cat. So I want to open the yard and the door in the house you grew up in. Yes. Where, why were there so many books in your house? Apparently there were just books There everywhere. were not books in my house. Uh, my mother was a school principal. Ah. And 
there were books like there are books my father used to read like Muhammad Ali okay. uh, sting like a butterfly okay. stuff like that but I just generally loved books first of all I was a fat kid so you weren't doing any sport I read that and I was like I was a fat kid I did shot put I fat did shot, kids must I throw, did shot put too. Oh, there no, we go. You special. <laughs> fat kids must throw a ball. I threw a ball. <laughs> but I think books, I found others in books. Uh. I found my imagination in books. So my mother would get me secondhand books because she knew I loved books. We had encyclopedias. They were yeah. all secondhand. And I remember one school holiday reading up to X, Y, Z. And I remember reading the xylophone, ancient Greek uh, uh, something instrument, in, musical instrument. Wow. I was a nerd. I had pink glasses. Okay. So, so you understand my mm. problems. And I think when you're a fed kid, you need to find something. A, here's why you need to find something. You need to find rebuttals because people are going to tease your fat ass <laughs> exactly. all the time. Exactly. Okay. So <laughs> if, what I had is I had books. Mm. And books comes with a certain intellect. So. But also I'll tell you what books when I'm looking on the outside, looking mm. into you, what they did was, the more you read, the more you realize there weren't stories about us. Yes. Oh, yes. Which then fueled this fire yes. that you want to tell, you know, I, our stories. If you, my discourse as an actress will always be about the representation of black women. Yes. That's my discourse uh. as a person. So did you know this when you were 14? I didn't you, know this when I was 14. I didn't. I, trip to America. Actually, a very interesting thing happened to me. I had a friend called Moon Zara Arthur. That's wow. quite a name, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Moon was a reader like me, and she brought me... My first book that I read, written by a black woman, was The Color Purple. Okay. She brought this book, she gave it to me, and she said, I think you should read this. And I read this book, and I discovered we exist. Okay. So it, it, it grew this passion. So when I went to university, I didn't study drama. I Sorry, actually... Literature? Yeah. Yeah. I did African literature as, as part of my... I actually went back to do my honours Had you read uh, Things Fall Apart before you I decided to I read Things Fall Apart part. in matric. Okay. Like all of us did. Okay. And then discovered Chinua Achebe. Yeah. So, but when I went to vids and I discovered that there was like a library, there was a world mm. of us and all our madness and all our beautifulness and all our loveness and our mm, lusciousness. Mm. It was like, it was going to the temple, man. Dude, the sun must have shone Yo. 12 midnight for you. <laughs> Beyond midnight. Yeah. And I was, I'm a binge reader. Like when I'm reading, it's like, You're I'm in there. I'm in there. That's why I still don't have the modern technology like stuff. Twitter. She's not on Twitter, guys. She says, <laughs> this is the one thing she's like, I, I agree to come to this interview so I can tell the whole country I'm not on Twitter, I'm not on Instagram, you are talking to the wrong person, a mad it's person. It's not me. It's not her. It's not me. There's it's somebody not else out there. But now, if you're shy, how do you win a competition to go to America when you're 14 doing because a Because I, I write a monologue. I perform the monologue as an actress. You uh. must remember that performance allows you to be somebody else. True. You channel all of your stuff through that person mm -hmm. and you can leave the stage and you can go back to your normal world where you're not famous, where you're a fat girl, oh. and <laughs> or you can do shot put. Yeah. So, <laughs> Javelin. Yeah, I, you know, things like that. So I win this competition. I write this monologue. I enter the competition. I win it. We don't have money. I'm a black girl in Alex. Mm. Uh, there's no money. We don't have money for me to go to America. And my mother goes on this... I don't know what to call it, a crusade. A mother. A mother. A she mother, goes on the mother journey. She goes on the mother journey. She goes like, on the mother my journey. My child will do this. Yes. And because there is a God, and it's a she God, mm -hmm. she God arrives. And a man to this day who I've never met pays for me to go to America. Oh, wow. So I will always rely on the kindness of strangers because there are kind strangers in this yeah. world. Oh, wow. Oh man, I'm... Yeah, let's have a moment. Yeah, that is, that is... That, a, yeah. Do you know what it is? Because you know there's so many people that will email you and, and message you on Facebook and be like, oh, my daughter is, is, yes, is in a gymnastic team, they're going to Australia. Yeah. And you always just kind of read it yep. and you're like, oh, okay. Yep. But, you know, I could be sending a you yes. to, you know, to America. Somebody sent me to America. Ah. And that person, whoever they are, made it possible for me to sit here today with you. Mm. Because what they did is they allowed me to be seen to know that I have this gift and to continue nurturing my gift in whatever way I could. Mm. Because when I came back from that trip, the former Johannesburg Art Ballet Drama and Music School yeah. opened to black students. 
and I was one Tell of me. yeah, and I was one of the first black girls there. In fact, in my year, there was another black girl. She left, so there was I was the only black girl. I became a deputy head girl. Mm. I became head of hostel. I was kept on the red team. I got half colors. I was that kid. Okay. But again, my life has always had the story of kindness. Kindness. On I other go people. to the school with no money. I go and audition. At the audition, they said to me, "You'll have to go back a year." And I say, "No, I will not," because my parents don't have money. Yeah. And a gentleman called Golani Dawusha that my mother knew says to my mother, there is this net bank fund that you can apply for. We apply for the net bank fund, I get the money, I go to the school. But there is, there is a, there's, a, there's another level to this. Every term, I had to take a bus from Bramfontein and go downtown to net bank and get a man to sign, looking at my report, whether I could go into the next term. So I spent my last two years of high school not playing around. Yeah, yeah, okay. So listen, I want to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to ask you something about Alex because you've got a close... Oh, yeah. Alex is, is your place, right? Oh, I want to ask you something about here. that. And then you cannot forget the fact that we're running our week competition. Remember, 5,000 Rand e-gift card. Details are on the screen. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Real Talk on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm hanging out with a longtime starlet of the theatre, film and television, the lovely Mushidi Mutsega. Listen, girl, let's yeah. talk about Alex. Let's talk about Alex. Because I, I frequent Alex because I go by hard body. Okay, <laughs> the chicken. Yeah, okay, bring it out. Okay. We all go there for the hard body. Exactly. It's now, got the real hard body. Hard body is like really organic chicken. The one they the kill this morning. Organic, yes. That's the one I go yes, by. Yes, yes. Do you drive in Alex? Of course I drive in Alex. How, babe, do you do it? No, but you must drive in Alex. If you can't drive in Alex... You can't drive. You can't drive. <sighs> and you must drive in Alex with love and patience. Whilst you're driving and there's situations going on, you must observe them. Okay. And enjoy them. Yeah. Because that's not your normal life, Angit. No, it's not. I just go in for the chicken. Yeah, yeah Mara, <laughs> you can't get the hard body without some kind of situation. Experience, Experience. adventure. It's, but it's, it is an adventure. I really feel like driving in Alex should be one of the things tourism South Africa <laughs> lists as the things to do when you, you land must here. remember, I grew up walking to that place oh, to get the chicken on Sunday. Okay. I walked up there. Okay. To get the chicken okay. and then walk back. Okay. I must get the chicken, I must get the maguinha, and then I must walk back and get the veggies on the way. Okay. And still go and slaughter it. It's not like now where you can buy it the way it's already done. It's so. No, 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 no. <laughs> I want to talk about you watching... What is it? We Were Warriors? Once We Were Warriors? Yes. That movie? That you, movie. You I went on a date it. and you watched it and you cried? Yo. We never went on that date again. <laughs> <laughs> so he never called you after that? We are friends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we never did that one again. But I think there's some movies that are so... That film spoke about a people. Yeah. It spoke... It reminded me a lot of Alex. Bridget for me. Why? I think... The drinking, mm -hmm. the yard I grew up in, there was a lot of alcohol. Mm -hmm. My family doesn't drink, my parents don't drink. Uh, I mean, my dad now, he's gotten into like having whiskeys and stuff, okay. but my dad is 73. So at some point in your life, you know, um, and there's a brutality that comes with alcohol. Yes. There's a violence that comes with alcohol. Like a non-consequential Yes. Behavior. And it's of, it's, of, it's of another level, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like people have been drinking the whole night and then at three in the morning, there's like a beating that goes down. Mm. You know what I mean? These people have been singing. They've been like so happy. It's the extremities of alcohol mm. that we don't talk about as a culture. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, yeah, because it's... it's even the way it's positioned and the way it's marketed is that yes. the, the ad stops whilst we're still singing and happy. Yes. The ad never continues. It never continues to what the breaking happens. of bottles. Yes. To the, the, to the harassment of women. Yes. To the strangling. And it was the violence against women that for me, I mean, the scenes of the beatings, mm. it was a bit like watching Ike and Tina oh, and yes. that scene Ooh. in the car oh, with Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Man and Angela Bassett, yeah. I mean, they, they brought down the house. Yeah. It, 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 like, it's, okay. that kind, it's the kind of thing that you don't forget. It so if you've ever you. woken up in the middle of the night and heard somebody being beaten up, mm. and probably before you went to sleep, those people were singing and being merry, 
it is quite, it is something that will stay with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that movie took me home. And at which point, uh, because I know you said that you, you were watching too many movies, reading too many books where our stories were being, weren't being told. And you said something so profound that we need to write ourselves into history. We do need to write ourselves into history. Yeah. And, and w what did you watch? What, what, what role was it? What TV role was it? What did you read that certified you as a person who wants to be the maverick that you've become today? The maverick, yo. Girl, you've got English, man. Uh, Hi, man. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, you're educated. You know, I don't know what it is. I think it's, it's... Listen, I read a lot of black women writers. Mm. I love them. You know, uh, I subscribe to a blog, and recently I read a piece called The Black... It's by a woman writer called Tay Selassie, mm -hmm. and it's the black... The, the stories of... The, the, the sex lives of black women. Mm. I hope I'm not, re I'm not saying the wrong title here. I'm probably saying it in a different way. And we write with such, um, it's a space mm. that, is, that we evoke. It's a space that we enter. It's a space of memory. It's a space of pain. It's Nostalgia. A space of love, yeah. you know? Yeah. But in that space, for me, it, it's, it's almost like a house with rooms that you enter. And each one of them has got a place for you. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? It's like opening a, a wardrobe, you know? And Not, find your outfit. Yes, and yeah. they're like all these dresses. And all these dresses, when you put them on, they take you to a different place. It's not Alice in Wonderland. That's dreamy, though, hey? But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That it was my need to say all my experiences, all the pain, all the beauty, all the struggles, they can be written. They can become part of a dialogue. And I think the lack of of black women's stories yeah. from the time we're little yeah. actually affects us. Yes, because we, y you look to fit in, in other places and then you find that you are shaping yourself to fit yes. in there, right? Yes. Whereas you could have just gone and found your story where yes. you feel comfortable in it, yes. you know, then you're like, oh, okay, so this dress, I'll, I'll use the metaphor you were yes. using. Okay, so this dress is, I'm very tall and this dress is for very short people. Yes. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try not be tall so that I can fit into this dress. <laughs> And you know, we, and, and for me, the other thing is that what it creates is that because I was reading black women writers, it creates a certain kind of self-worth, mm. a certain kind of confidence, a certain kind of self-esteem. You didn't become Anna Lim daughter. Right now we're talking about this idea, mm. this thing of you being a tall girl, being a fat kid, yeah. and having, you've had to go undergo something yeah. to get here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To have the confidence and some you sort have. of some insecurity, some yes, some oh, and I shift need to it. fix this. Okay, let me let me yes, yeah, and yeah. shift it and own this because yeah. you own this. Yeah. I mean, this is owned. This is here now. <laughs> this is here now. <laughs> you know? So, and I, and I think that when you, when you read books where you find yourself, you find why you are different, mm. why you are special. But what was that first book that you read where you, you read it or saw the character or saw somebody in the movie and then you were like, hey, well, hang on. There I am. There's Mushidi. There were so many. Some of them, they didn't even have to do with me. I mean, like, for example, Buchi Machete's Joys of Motherhood. Mm -hmm which spoke about black mothers mm. raising their children. That book affected me. But you weren't even a mother then? Nervous Condition by Titi Dangaremba uh, knocked my, just knocked me. It was about this bright, intelligent, like feisty girl growing up in Zimbabwe with his father who had this, this family that he had to look after and just feeling like somebody wants to break out, mm. you know, uh, and suffering from, um, what is this? when we lose weight so much and we starve ourselves. Anorexia? Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. If you haven't read Nervous Condition. Okay. I if you haven't read, read Nervous Condition. I'm wasting my time. No, I'm not going to say you're wasting your time. <laughs> I'm not like that. I'm going to say, Anele, let's read. Just send it to me then. Let's read. Just send it to me. So that book for me was really meeting somebody who was living in a universe that says there is a square when they were a circle. Do you not find it that you are overly critical then when you are being handed scripts to read for characters that they want you to audition for? Like, what, your agent's name, Mona Lee? I don't have an agent. Let me just put that. I, I have left Munin. Okay. I represent myself. Okay. Yes. So are you not overly critical because you are, you do come from a very like, hmm, how do I put this? Put it. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> She's not just Say it. You do come from a, I don't want to say learned, educated, because... 
from a very evolved place. There we go. Mm, I'll take that. Yes, from a very evolved that. place. Mm. So when a script, if I was a movie director or like a, a, a soapy director and I was giving you a script, I would be shaking like this, no, giving it to you. Because let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Okay. We live in South Africa. Uh -huh. We are not making a lot of movies. We are not writing a lot of roles for women. We're not writing a lot of interesting roles for women. Mm -hmm. So when you get a script, I think the challenge always is, how do I raise the bar? Uh -huh. That's my challenge always to myself. Uh -huh. When I get Naomi, my challenge is, how do I raise the bar? What do I bring to make this character more real, more, more accessible, mm -hmm. uh, let her speak to the people she needs to speak to? Mm. Um, how do I also raise the bar in terms of acting in this country? How do I say the next person coming after me yeah. needs to be better than me? Yes, and, and that's what, okay. What, and it's okay. And that's okay. And I believe in that. Yeah. I, I don't want another Mushidi. Yeah. I want somebody who's better than me. I yeah. want to watch TV and go, oh my word. I'm blown away by that yes. person. Okay. Yes, and when I watch TV and I see somebody like that, I, I, I want to call them. I want to say to them, hey, you, you're great. You know, you could tweet them, but you're not on Twitter. <laughs> it's fine, because I'll meet them one day and I'll tell them in person, which has even much of a which bigger is, impact. Yeah, which is better. I like that line. I'm going to use it. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. Yeah, let's shame the devil. I'm going to write that down. Yeah, write it down. Make sure me. I drop it into <laughs> random conversations with people, even if it doesn't make sense. Listen, we're going to go for a quick break. Don't forget, we have us a WhatsApp line here where you can send your 20 second voice notes for our guests on the daily so come with it come with it <laughs> And welcome back. So after 25 years as a professional actress, Mushidi has expanded her skill set to include the title of award-winning film producer. Her debut feature, an Afrikaans feature film, Nokal, was nominated for a 2017 Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I have goosebumps. I love that film. Not enough people have seen that no, film. No, not enough. South Africans need to see this film. And I'm not saying because I produced the film. I'm saying it because that story is so relevant. It's so current. It's so deep. It's so, it has so many layers. I can't even touch it. It was bigger than me. Yeah. You know, I read an article when you, you, you were announced as producer and it says, you know, Mushidi breaks into the producing world. And then it reminded me of, I read Lance Armstrong's book and mm -hmm. he says that, you know, he, he, he would read reviews about how he raced, right? Mm. And, you know, they'd be like, oh, Lance Armstrong flew up those hills. <laughs> and he's just like, I wanted to say, stop, guys. I yes. didn't fly up anything. Nobody flew up there. I sweated. Yes. I pedaled. You cried. I cried. Yes. I, 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 I suffered. It's like, yes. I, I may have made it look easy, but it trust wasn't. me, it was anything. It but, so when I read, I felt like, you know, guys, after 25 years, no one no. breaks into anything. No, nobody breaks into anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was not a bank robbery, guys. No, it was hard work. Yeah. And when I met, when I came to work with David and John, they'd been on this project for 10 years. Oh, wow. And I worked with them for the last five years till we produced the film. And I loved the, fil the, the story from the day I read it. Because I heard you were just editing and scripts helping yes, there and script, there. Yes, I was script. And I think what had happened is that there was a lot of stuff that was taken out over the years because different people had come on board and said you should do this and whatever but when i read it again it took me to alex because in the 80s my neighbors were colored mm. and when i would step out of the house i would speak afrikaans and when i went to the national school of the arts it was you know uh yeah um, so afrikaans has always been in my universe so when i read john's story the only word i had is yes mm. it's mm. just such the correct word for yeah yes the spirit of the, the entire spirit thing. like yeah. it just and and the characters and the the authenticity and i i don't like that word because sometimes we abuse it yeah of course um but it had a soul but i mean you you said that it, it taught you so much about yourself being a producer because you had to you realize how how difficult and rewarding and colorful it is yes. to manage people. Oh, it is. Because that's all producing is. It's a management Listen, job. Listen, and every day you have to come with a little bit of hardness and a little bit of kindness. Oh. You have to be 
You have to be kind to everybody. You have to look them in the eye, especially in this country when we don't pay our people enough, mm. when there just isn't enough money. And people are, they are giving you their heart and soul. We, we did this film on a wing and a prayer. We did this film from the kindness and generosity of a massive tribe of people in Cape Town who came mm. on board, who said, I want to be part of this film, who helped us out. I literally came off black sales. Yeah. And we were like in pre-production whilst I was on black sales. And when I told some of the guys who were working on black sales that I was doing this, they actually said, if you need help, we will help you. So there was a day we needed a camera guy mm. and I phoned, I phoned this man, George Amos, who's like huge. He shoots international stuff. And I said, George, would you help us out? And he said, yes, I will. I mean, I paid him nothing, mm. nothing. What needs to happen? Because I think we, we talk in circles around this film industry and the TV industry and just the entertainment industry in South Africa as a whole. We talk in circles, but we never come with solutions. What needs to happen for the money to enter the right hands? You know what? I think it's, it's I think we need to have a fund that is basically about every year, we're going to choose a film that we make as South Africans. And we pour everything and into it. And we pour it. everything into it. And I mean like, and we choose, and it's not about color, it's not about politics. We choose from like a, like a plethora of mm. stories. And we are brave enough to keep trying because I think other countries have made films over the years yeah. and been willing to, to try and fall. We don't want to fall. We're very scared of failure. We South want Africans. to make the Oscar film. We didn't make an Oscar film. We made a bioscope. Have you ever been to the bioscope? Yeah, yeah. I went to the bioscope. Yeah, we you made know a when bioscope it goes and it reached the Oscar. Yes, you know what I mean? And somebody said to me, what did it feel like to know that you were being considered? I said, you know what? They called our name. <laughs> Do you understand? They called our name. Nume Scully. Yeah, Nume Scully. <laughs> I mean, Nume Scully. Like, they, had to, they had to sit through us. Somebody had to sit there and practice like, yeah. so, sorry, am I saying Scully, this right? Scully, whatever they said, N N N it doesn't matter. <laughs> The bottom line is they called our name. Do you know what that is like? You know, years ago, I, I, I had this opportunity where I got cast in South Africa to go shoot an episode of ER. Yes. And I'll never forget because the one day I was going on set on the Warner Brothers uh, set. and The lot. The lot. The, the lot. lot. <laughs> and we arrived at security and this man just couldn't be bothered to say my name. And he just went on the comms and said, Ma'am, there's somebody here with a name I can't pronounce saying it's coming on set. <laughs> and the flip side was that when I came back to the South Africa, the day I arrived, as I, la as I came out, a guy said, hello, Osmushidi. And I thought, man, there's a reason why I live here. Yeah. Because somebody can say my name. Do you understand wh what a big thing it is yeah. for somebody to say your name? Yeah. Anel, yeah. Dot. Somebody gave you that name. I mean, just say it's it. It's not a random situation, yeah. guys. Names are not random. Names are powerful. They're on purpose. No, and names call in other, other things, other people, other places, other spaces. Mm. So, yeah. So we were called Scully, hey. Nume, Nume, Nume Scully. Scully. Call me. Listen, this is real talk. Where today the <laughs> stage is obviously Mushidi's. Time for a quick break. We'll be right back. And welcome back and what a pleasure this is for a woman who hardly ever does interviews. I'm glad to be getting real with Mushidi Musweka. <laughs> I actually, uh, you did this one interview and you said, I don't like doing interviews, but my job uh, requires for me to do them. I just want to tell people, just Google me. So I thought, okay, fine, I'm going to Google her. I took my computer, Brrr, Google, then I put your name you in. You know what? It's because people, we're having a conversation. Yeah. You're interested. Okay. You're not asking me where I was born. Okay. You've Ex covered that one. Except because I want the chicken where yeah, you Yeah, well, no, you just wanted to know how to, to if there's an, a short route to, to, to pass the traffic. No, there isn't. Why? <laughs> you drive. It's part of the experience. Because I looked on Google. There is, like, nothing about you. You were just like, no, it's okay, fine. Keep to myself. Well, it's complicated, this business, isn't it? It is. But what I loved is the fact that you own the fact that you, you didn't fit into the scene. No, the I don't fit into the scene. I so don't. you went and you were like, you know what? Not my vibe. You know you were there. Yeah, let me go home. Shem, you were there. Because it's exactly how it happened. Yeah. I remember I was working on Channel O, and Channel O was always having parties. Oh, okay. And I went to a party, and I remember standing there and going, you just don't belong here. This is not your vibe. This is not you. Go home. Go home. And I got into my car, and I went home. And I've been home. 
<laughs> I'm home already. I'm home. <laughs> Listen, on Twitter, I'm at Emerald Stone. Her name is Angela says, please make sure she knows young actresses in the training like myself see her and we're grateful for, for her. Oh, that is so beautiful. I don't even know what to say. Hey, uh, girl. Guys, but your Twitter names, hey? Just Tinky Daisy. <laughs> Yeah. Tinky Daisy. Tinky Daisy. Tinky Daisy, baby. Oh, baby man. Says, uh, Mushiri is everything. Wow, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And then Mpo Masia says, uh, Mushiri is a firebrand. I miss her on the screen. Hashtag bring back Naomi. Hey, Naomi. Ne? Hey, Naomi, girl. Naomi, hey. Which other role do you feel like, you know, was one of your biggest moments? Because I know you acted with Tay Diggs, with Joe Scott. I, I mean... Go, Tandy Newton, you've been, I mean, you're international. I don't know about that. Well, I'm local. I'm hard body, I'm LA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hard body, guys, I'm a hard body. <laughs> you know what, for me, actually, funny enough, it would be a theater show. Ah. When I was at Vets, I read Tennessee Williams' Streetcar Named Desire. And I wanted to play Blanche mm -hmm. Dubois. Mm -hmm. Now, Blanche was not written for a black woman. It was written no, no. for a white woman. But you were like... Let's I said, that. I want that role. Is that the one you did with John Gani? No. What did I you did, do with John I, Gani? I did nothing, nothing but, the, but truth. the truth. Okay. But I did Streetcar. It was then later done with an all-black cast set in Sapphire Town. And I lived my dream. And I played Blanche Dubois. And it was a role I loved. I still love. Mm -hmm. I think it is the most well-written role for an actress. And... And one that painted. took me to places. You painted it. It took me places. It made me realize that I have other levels as an actor. Mm. It pushed me. You know, we, you, a, 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 a character who goes mad is, is a pretty huge space to go to. And she goes mad because she's in love, because S she loves. Say that again. A character who goes mad mm. is a huge place to go to. Mm -hmm. Please unpack that for me. Because madness comes in many levels. And when I was doing that play, I remember thinking, what are the spaces of madness that black women inhabit? Mm -hmm. And I thought about the fact that most of us grew up in very small spaces, mm -hmm. but there was an obsession with cleanliness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Black mothers have an obsession. Spring with cleaning, babes. Yo. To Brooke Benton. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalia Jackson. Thank the you. OJs. <laughs> <laughs> we know this. Lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had to step on blankets inside a bath? Have you <laughs> to clean them? <laughs> have you cleaned stoops? <laughs> have you washed dishes? Uh, take and the curtains down. <laughs> we didn't sleep in my house until dishes were washed and we had cleaned the floors. So, and I began to realize that there were all kinds of madnesses playing out. That even if we couldn't play them out in the in the in the outside world, mm. but in our homes, there were madnesses being played out, mm. you know? Um, and that, this thing of alcohol, because Blanche drinks. Mm. She drank mm. whiskey. She starts the play drinking. Mm. She ends the play drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to also deal with this, this thing of what is drinking? What happens when somebody is doused? What are they really doing? Mm. Why are you numbing yourself? And what happens when you're drunk? Because no, you're no longer, you supposedly numb, but you're more alive now. Yeah. You and know. You, and aware and open. And open. And open. And open. And open. And open. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it, for me, it was, it was a place I'd never been to as an actress. That, yeah. that space of, of losing control. Of, of somebody whose universe, whatever they thought it was, has completely crumbled. Somebody who's created a lie about their life. I think we have a lot of Blanches at the moment. Yes. We I do. think we're in an industry of Blanches. <laughs> yes. I think we Blanche out all the time. But now here's my question. I spoke to Pamela Nombete the other day, mm. and she said that when she comes off stage, she's open, mm. right? And the adrenaline is here, mm. and it's almost like she feels like she's at her sixiest, and she's mm. more like, there like mm. oh, and with the conversations and it's a highway now mm. when you come off stage do you uh, yeah okay I run okay I run I'm out I can't I can't be with people I want to be I want to go home I want to be with myself mm. I want to get back to myself yeah uh, and then I'll deal with the world how long does it take you to to come back okay we'll, we'll use blanche as an example mm. from being blanche to being mushidi as soon as i take off my clothes even when i was doing naomi yeah. i would i would get off set 
I would have to take off my makeup. I'd have to go home. Mm. I, would, I would never go into malls after I'd just done Naomi. I needed time to just get back to me. Uh -huh. Even if it means getting into my house, making myself a cup of tea, wearing my own clothes, having nothing to do with that woman. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Leaving her. Leaving her not at the doorstep, at the job. Okay. So I think also when I started in the industry, I worked with some wonderful, wonderful souls. I worked with Ndati Ramla Makhene, who mm. is late now, but who was phenomenal in teaching me. A science. A science yeah. and a respect. Yeah. There's a respect to this. And when I lived in America for a year and I studied the Suzuki method, which talks about when you, the stage is a sacred place. And when you enter the stage, you are, you are raising those who have gone before. Wow. I want to Google the Suzuki method now. You are the Suzuki method. Ah, I know you. Usile, Usile. I know there's a Suzuki, man. I'm so <laughs> sad that we have to go for a break, right? But we'll be right back for the last time. And it's like, it's breaking me that we only have like, what? Nine minutes left with her. It's breaking me. And welcome back for the last few minutes on Real Talk on this chilly Wednesday evening. So there was an interview in the Health Chronicle. I don't remember that one. Yeah, no, it wasn't yours, girl. Oh, it was thank God. David Max Browns. Yes. Where he said, uh, they asked him what was the most special thing about a moment on a shoot. And he said, my wife Mushidi finding out she's pregnant mm. on a shoot. On a shoot. I meant, girl, let us into the story <laughs> now here, men. Listen, it was so surreal for us because... We're shooting in Ocean View, uh -huh. which does not have a view of the ocean. <laughs> I'm just, I just want to say. Just put that out there. Let me just put that out <laughs> there. We're shooting this place. We've been there for 10 days. It's raining. It's gray. We are worried about our crew. It's our last day. We need to get the crew out. We're sitting at the gynae, and I'm being told I'm pregnant. All I remember thinking was, is my crew going to make it today? Because when you're producing a film, mm. it becomes about the people. Mm. But what about the extra person now? Well, the extra person, I, as soon as we finished shooting, I got involved with the extra person. Okay. You were so, like... Yes. So I, I, and because I was doing yoga at the time, it has always been able to bring me back to that place, you. to the place of it's about this person, it's about this moment in my life, which I have always wanted, okay. which was happening. But... It was surreal for us because when you're looking at Table Mountain thinking the cloud is moving in and there's a guy and you're saying you're pregnant, the two universes don't meet. Oh, wow. And apparently you kept up with your husband. You, I did. 4 a.m. cold went, times, you were like, let's went, do it. My baby's a soldier. Uh, she chose this mama. She's been to war already. She's been to war already. And then when, when I hear that story and then I read um, an article that you wrote about your mother and that... Earlier on, when you were a kid, your, your mother used to teach by instruction. Mm. And then later in life, it was observation where she would do things and you would watch her and that's mm. how you would learn. Mm. Uh, for Ariella, your daughter, what's important for you to tell her? And then most importantly, what is important for her to watch you do and learn like that? I think it's important for her to see me being present. Uh -huh. And I think the most important thing I can teach my daughter is to know that she's not a second class citizen that she is worth it, mm. that she does not need to be validated by somebody else, that the first validation she has is of herself. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something controversial, not controversial, that's a little bit, you know, um, I wish to teach my daughter how to be selfish. We don't teach women. Oh, babe. We don't of teach course. women that. May we teach our daughters oh. how to be selfish. No, no, come May here. May we teach our daughters yes. to know when to leave. Yeah. May we teach our daughters when enough is enough, may we teach them Yo. that you do not need somebody else to know you're beautiful, you're worth it, you are intelligent, selfish. You selfish. Look selfish. out for number one now. Number, number one. one. Number one is here. When it don't feel right to you, forget it, and don't compromise. My brother taught me that. My younger brother taught me Re that. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Not ever. My brother said to me, "When you decide to settle down, don't compromise." On uh, who you are. Okay. And this, your husband, this relationship, that, 
There's compromise, honey. <laughs> you both, you both creators, of course. There's compromise. Compr we create. <laughs> We produced a movie. That was a compromise. compromise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But watching him go from just being your husband to, you know, the father of your child, mm. you know, what, what, what have you learned about him now when you see him in a different light? Well, David has a son. Yes. So I've seen him as a parent oh, before. Excellent. Okay. And he loves children. So I wasn't surprised. There's no surprise. Okay. But I think he's never had a daughter. A little princess. And I think, yeah. Did it just like make him mushy pies inside? I think, I think he doesn't know what just hit him. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's somewhere out there floating, but he will recover. <laughs> I think girls are just different to boys. I think girls come with other stuff. Yeah. And they're fierce. Yeah. Little girls are fierce. I don't know when we teach them to lose it though. Just, just tell them to hold on to yeah, it. Yeah, ne? Don't try to, to tidy it up. Don't try, we tidy up girls. That's what we do. Don't be this. No, you do this. this. Yes. No, you do that. No, you yes. And I think it's our own fear being projected onto them. And yeah. listen, I think parenthood is a state of fear. I think in this country today, it is a serious state of fear, mm -hmm. being a parent, because you just don't know. But I think you have to allow the idea that there is something bigger than you mm. that is holding the situation, that is guiding the situation. And sometimes you're going to be the student and not the teacher. And on that note, I hope each and every young girl watching us today with a mm -hmm. dream and a talent heard exactly that. Even if you don't have all the answers yet, they come in time. You will do it. That's all we have time for today. Uh, one of my all-time favorite females on screen was with us today, Mushidi Musheka. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It has been real, Mzansi. Woo! Tomorrow, 5 p.m.